Hello, I'm doing my final presentation on Jacques Colfer. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Um, I'm going to probably butcher some of these Jewish names. I'm going to still try. I'm sorry. Just a fair warning. So, I chose to do him because he showed a lot of selfless sacrifices and bravery through some of the actions that he did. Um, he also, you know, chose to do these things. He chose to stay and he had lots of opportunities to leave, but he didn't. He, but also he was a playful and kind soul that was a father figure to a lot of these orphans. Um, in the documentary, The Last uh, Cold Check Boy, um, a man named Isaac, Isaac Belfer, a previous orphan that um, was raised and educated by Kolchek stated, we never called it an orphanage because it didn't feel like an orphanage. And I feel like that says a lot about, you know, the way that their point of view and how they were educated by him because I feel like not a lot of orphanages are probably like that. So must, he must have been very special. Um, he allowed these children to be children during a time of war and devastation. Um, I feel that he chose to be an upstander because uh, probably the way that he, because he was very educated, he was an author, a pediatrician, a teacher, and a social worker. Um, but he also was quoted to, in his youth, he played with children that were poor and lived in bad neighborhoods. So his passion for helping disadvantaged youth really continued through his adulthood. So I believe his family probably taught him compassion and love for everybody. So he didn't see, you know, the difference as a child. And he probably didn't see the difference now between them and him. Um, this aided to his morals as an adult. So... His story, he was uh, born in 1878 to an assimilated Jewish family in Warsaw, Poland. Um, most of his focus on his work as an author was studying the secret depths of the child's soul. He believed that children are people and that we should treat them with respect just like we do adults. Um, he, through the orphanage, he was able to study, you know, and research these things. Um, at the time, these, these ideologies were not seen to be really valued or um, believed, but now in modern times, we do see the benefits of what he did say. Um, 1911 and 1912, he became the director of this orphanage originally. Um, but the Germans did create the Warsaw Ghetto in 1940, and the orphans and everyone was forced to move into this ghetto, and one of the largest concerns was uh, food for the children. Even when Kolchak was starving himself, and he was not, despite his own health, clearly he was thinking about other people first before himself. Um... In the documentary, The Last Kolchak Boy, he tells this story about how Kolchak uh, saw the Nazis confiscating some potatoes, and he knew that that was a huge staple in these children's diets. So he stopped these Nazis and risked his life and asked if he could have those potatoes for these Jewish orphan and orphans. But they said, if you're a Pole and a doctor, then why do you care about these children? And if you're a Pole and a doctor, why do you care about these Jewish children? And he said, well, I am Jewish. So even when he was able to lie about his identity and probably take the easy route, he is proud of his identity, not that others weren't but he really risked his lives to try and get anything for these children. Um, on the 5th of August, 1942, he boarded these 
trains, the the trains that brought them ultimately to their death, um, along with 200 children. Very, very sad. Um, I feel that his mission is uh, that he tried to best educate these children with honesty and respect and truth, even till the very end. Um, his mission was to give these children that already had nothing, um, to give them love and comfort during a time of war in very hateful times. Um, so some of their tactics and strategies um, and some things that they did to bring awareness to this genocide. Uh, Kulchek during the 1930s had his own radio program, but it was canceled because uh, of the rising anti-Semitism in Poland. Um, he obviously he refused to wear the Star of David patch um, because he said he doesn't acknowledge that. He was not a real, really big religious person. Um, so that was a huge sign of rebellion. He didn't listen to any of the Germans' rules. Um, he obviously helped the effort to help these Jewish children as much as he could, which is a huge sign of rebellion. Uh, he stayed in the ghetto when he didn't have to, risking his own life. Um, he stayed with the children until the very end, until death, and comforted them even in their last moments. Um, he never rejected one of the orphans in the orphanage. Uh, he would accept everybody because he knew that if he didn't, they would just end up on the street and just die. Um, and I feel that something that we could bring into uh, some tactics and strategies that we can adopt within our own lives and communities. I feel that um, in the documentary, The Last Kolchak Boy, he stated that um, he was educated by Kolchak to respect himself and to believe in, in, in himself and to love himself. So he was able to see when he was being discriminated against that that wasn't right. He knew that he was a good person so he was able to escape to Russia and save his own life. Um, I feel that as a nation, we can adopt this attitude um, in believing that your life is worthy and that you don't deserve to be discriminated against at all in any way. And I feel like this ideology can be spread into our uh, public schools to create more self-worth in children and care they can carry that throughout their adulthood. Um, I feel that since now I'm armed with this information, some steps that I'm going to take to bring uh, attention to genocide and genocide denial, especially in these really uncertain times of uh, COVID-19, we have to keep watching the news and seeing what is still occurring because the world didn't, didn't just stop. Um, you know, things are still going on in our world just, and I feel like the government can use, um, our own fear by, uh, spreading that in the news, right? Only pushing uh, COVID-19 information in our news so that when something else does happen, they're able to cover it up. I feel like it's a good distraction for people and uh, I feel like people could probably take advantage of that like um, people who would want to start a genocide this would be a perfect time to do that not you know not good but you know people are so focused on themselves and their own nation that we could overlook something huge that is occurring right now um, and also, like I said, we can, um, in our school systems, I believe that we need to push and teach self-worth and uh, no hate. We can't, we cannot accept any discrimination against any ethnicity or religion or anything. Um, thank you for listening. And I really, really loved this class. And I hope you have a good summer.